Es un hombre extraordinario. Me impresiona mucho. Pues, ¿sabes que Yo creo que no es tanto el físico, es más bien la personalidad que tiene y todo lo que proyecta. Ya me lo imagino con su smoking blanco, un martini en una mano y un costoso habano en la otra. Provocativo. Atractivo. <risa> Stereophonic Sound Spectacular. Hello there, and welcome to the exciting world of hip. This is a new departure in language instruction. For English-speaking people who want to talk to and be understood by jazz musicians, hipsters, beatniks, juvenile delinquents, and the criminal friends. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Nous allons, grâce à ce disque créé spécialement pour vous, essayer de tirer ensemble le maximum de qualité sonore de votre chaîne haute fidélité. Sit back, relax, and close your eyes. We're live. Hey, welcome everybody to this uh, The Real Agile podcast. It's episode 57. Yes, live long and prosper. Hey, today I'm with um, Aral Shinsao. Did I get it right? Mostly. Ryan, it sounds like Ryan Erickson. Mm -hmm. So it's very nice uh, to see you, gentlemen. And today uh, we are here because of my folly. I uh, brought you here because you're, uh, I think, a great mind. I know Ryan more than Aral. So Aral, it's nice to finally really meet you almost in person. Um, this virtual world, and I love our minds of um, what Daniel Mezik the other day at Agile Boston, he says like, uh, he, he seems to tell me that I'm the one who, who, who started this Agile Renaissance, but uh, it's not about me, it's not about e even either one of you, but when I saw that video the week after my passage at Agile Renaissance to talk about Agile is the new waterfall, and uh, probably this is this, uh, intelligent artificial because for me it's still machine learning there's nothing intelligent about this artificiality but whatever that may be another podcast um and uh so but probably the feed of youtube and rumble was giving me things about agile is the new waterfall because it was literally into a suggestion list that i discover this video that we're going to play a bit to to put our uh, listener into what we like to talk about is because it was the inspiration to, oh, that's great. So there's other guys in Germany uh, over at their company. It's called the uh, Strip. Do I pronounce Strip it or Strip? Stripe Giraffe. Stripe. 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 Stripe Giraffe. They seem to be a consulting firm of, you know, implementing Scrum, adoption of Agile and Lean, stuff like this. But anyways, we don't do necessarily. Pull, uh, pull. So the, and they made that video, kind of very sarcastic video in my sense to, Uh, the last 23 years of history and um yeah so i thought to myself like oh this is great um so i watched it three times the first time just to make sure that i got everything and i'd like to share it with you what 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 have you seen because i'd like to invite you on the side of my table but i hope you will invite me on your side of the table because it's different perspective uh, we are all unique human being and we don't see the same thing and uh, and of course It's not a question of debunking it, but at some point, I, I don't know if you remember, Ryan, when I um, chat to you live after I just watched it on, on WhatsApp, I was even voicing you. Uh, my, my, my first RL, just to put you in a mood, like when I watched it the first time, I laughed like Chris I said, like they, they nailed it, like on the point of all of these misconceptions. And it was so great in 2001 with those 17 guys and then move forward of today. It's, all of bunch of fake coach, uh, inflation of certification and stuff like this. But when I rewatch it and then I voice message you, Ryan, I was like, okay, but then again, the critic, it's on agile software development with whatever you want. It's nothing about business agility. In my sense, the real revolution, it's nothing about uh, getting people uh, being more innovative. But anyways, I'm disgracing. Let's welcome you first. <laughs> and, uh, I'd like to give you a chance to say um, hi to my listener and my jogger. There's a club of jogger on the Day Real Agile podcast. They will listen to us by doing their workout and their jogging. 
so I salute uh, Marta in uh, Norway, a uh, couple of people in uh, Amsterdam that run with us listening to uh, this podcast. So you know who you are. I love you and thank you for your coffee and Bitcoin. If you want to do mm -hmm. like them, go in the link in the description of this video and you could do this. So without further ado, Harold, who are you? And just like that. Uh, my name is Harold Shinsato. I was born in New York in Queens, went to college in Cambridge, Massachusetts at a uh, technology college company, I mean, technology university, well-known. I don't want to brag. You can see, see what it is on LinkedIn. And I ended up working at a, uh, as a software developer at a, at a company that was uh, related to and connected to Palo Alto Research Center at Xerox. And I got to experience a lot of what this video talks about that we're going to comment on in terms of the waterfall oppression and then I got really excited about Agile and eventually became independent as a, an Agile coach. And that's how I know these two gentlemen is through my work with that and also Open Space Technology. I'm a board member of the Open Space Institute and I believe uh, open space is something really critical and important for us to get out of the um, silos as, you, as they referenced, which is kind of like the whole uh, industrial process of turning one everyone into like little putting them everyone into little cages yeah which is anti-human awesome so sometimes we're gonna go back to this oppression of waterfall now today i'm i'm meeting so many people on both it and business that talk about agile oppression could you imagine that so um yeah ryan tell us who you are even if my audience know you a little bit better now but uh Nevertheless, welcome back to the Dairy Real Agile podcast. Nice to see you. Uh, thank you. Bonjour. Uh, I am Ryan Erickson. I originated my life in Terre Haute, Indiana. I educated in uh, a beautiful mystical place and learned about music very young and jazz very young. Ended up in college at a place I will brag about, Bowling Green State University, Bowling Green, Ohio. Go Falcons. At which point... I took a left turn uh, out of jazz music and went on a right turn into corporate and the, the corporate security blanket, as I like to call it, spent 20 years Ooh. with various and sundry companies, uh, last of which being IBM. And towards the end of my time with IBM, that's when I discovered Agile. I came into it from a, and I think we'll see it in the video, this hopeful, hopeful mode that, that, new ways of work and and more humane and collaborative and dare i say musical ways of work were possible and i did a little transformation on a team and i got the bug and that that traveled with me for a while um through a through a bump in my health life and then as i emerged from that emerging from COVID as well I encountered our friend Harold here, and as as it was a search for the source, right? I, I, I was in Agile before, and then I, I come back around and I see, whoa, um, I, I I'm not feeling the spirit. I'm seeing I'm seeing zombie Agile. I'm seeing body, but no heart, no spirit. Mm. Mm. And so that kind of led me here, and and I think we're all on the same page about the evils and inhumanity of imposition, and the really, beauty, the, in, the beauty of yeah. invitation, and what that means. As, as I am also on the Open Space Institute board with Harold, I believe in the magic of open space and liberation of the human spirit as a result. Let me ask you quickly, uh, Arol and Ryan. Maybe Arol, because I probably know the answer from Ryan. Uh, in terms of this open space kind of network from uh, Arison Owen, right? Or it's something else? Is it? That's it. That's it. Okay. And so, the, have you have you ever met uh, one of our friends from the enterprise network, enterprise Scrum network, called Michael Ehrman? Do you know this gentleman? Oh, very well. Yes. Because I love him so much too. It's uh, he's he's the one who actually introduced me to the open space concept back in the day when we were working together with Mike Beadle. Uh, so uh, that was uh, interesting to see that uh, 
let's call it like this, old IDs were more novelty than this apparently new IDs of today. So sort of speak, that was my perception when I was um, put in front of this uh, amazing thing because is uh, yeah, so that was, so that's great to have um, people of this other way of doing things, uncovering new way. Huh? Well, what's interesting, because you mentioned this, uh, Michael Herman was very early in the uh, open space universe. Yeah. And I'll just bring up, I think from Ecclesiastes, um, or it might be somewhere else, but the, there's nothing new under the sun. The ideas yeah. in open space are timeless and ancient yeah. and very indigenous. So yeah, <laughs> it's not really new. I think it was Michael who, who really uh, suggested me to read this, uh, um, The Canary in the Cold Mine, to make some kind of connection of like the, the real safety of, of, of a space to discuss and uncovering, uncover new ways of things like this. So. There is a lot to unpack around the, what I feel is uh, almost dangerous naivete about safety, psychological safety dangerous na naivete about no. creating things that are um well you know like safe to fail or fail safe <laughs> they're trying to make fail safe they're trying to make fail safe spaces and those are very dangerous yeah and um all right so maybe what i suggest to do is as i said like i contacted them over at the stripe giraffe to see if i could show the old it's, it's seven minutes is so i didn't have any feedback from them so just for respect and, and and by the way, guys, all the link of even some subject like after the it's going to be put live, I could put some uh, link into uh, open space, uh, the link of those gentlemen website, plus also, of course, the link of that video that I'm going to show on uh, an, excer an excerpt just to put ourselves in the uh, discussion. So I hope I choose the right place because I wanted to s just show the, the segment of the transition uh, between the two. And uh, so uh, w w just just to put ourselves into why we're here and what we'd like to, to discuss about. So I'm going to share my screen like this. Perfect. In your case, gentlemen, I don't think you need to put yourself on mute, but I will put myself on mute just for the because I'm on the uh, I'm the streamer now. So I'm going to share this screen, not this. Okay, yeah. All right. There we go. Over following a plan. Yeah! Yeah! We're going to go back to the beginning. Peeps, Melissa mm. Mo. Hey, Eric, the hair is perfect. Hey, let's evoke the spirit of Agile and stand up for our right to stand up. <laughs> Thank God, finally, we can stop doing and start talking stand about doing. Stand up. Stand up for your scrum. <laughs> Linda, exactamundo. Now, now, come here, come here, come here. Before we begin, we all gonna get on the same page here, you understand? When I say edge, you say aisle. Edge. 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 Aisle. Oh. Now, tell me who is not as excited as I am to boost our efficiency by talking about efficiency. Yeah. Are you with me? We're gonna break it down right now, real quick, all right? Now I am your certified Agile coach because do we not all want to be led, advised, and coached by people who have literally no obligation whatsoever to be trained in the actual field that they are coaching you in? Yeah! yeah! Oh my God, guys. <laughs> I, I don't know if I have to laugh or cry about this. I mean, of course, we cannot show the entire video. So if you want to watch the seven minutes, go in the description. I put the link for these guys 
uh, watch the entire one and then come back to our conversation. We're going to start having here unscripted. On, we're just so I'm going to I'm going to cry because I resemble that guy. I you, resemble that guy. You you wear a scrum master like him? Uh, no, but, but he, I mean I resemble that guy. That the the way of behaving. So. But not Jesus not in Christ. this context. So we'll, we'll talk about. Really, that. you? I I cannot imagine a purple squirrel jumping like this. But yes, I can actually. And you, Iro, what's your first reaction when you saw that 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 piece of art? Oh, the the beginning I really related to because you have all these people in these in their little cubicles. Oh, you mean the real beginning? Separate. Yeah, the beginning yeah. of the, of and, the yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, and, and like. I, I started in the software world and at, we, we at the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, they had beanbag chairs. There was such freedom. You mean uh, they we were getting, back in the day? Yeah, yeah, when, back when, in the early When I let yeah, right. uh, Steve Jobs stole uh, stuff at Xerox? <laughs> you yeah, mean I'm a, <laughs> yeah, so like the origins of the software field had a lot of freedom, even though there was strong military connections to it, there was a lot of freedom, joy, play. Uh, what, before Bill Gates got ha hammered in and, and like, there was a lot of hobbyists. People no, that was not Bill it. Gates, that was Paul Allen. Come on, poor Bill Gates. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's always it's not it's not Steve Jobs and, and, and Bill Gates. It's all the fault of Wozniak and, and Allen. Come on. They're the real evil, not the front guy. I'm I'm just playing around a little bit, like just yeah, like, messing with me. <laughs> I'm messing with you. I like it. Like, so, yeah. Yeah. so 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 like uh you know this 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 sense of freedom that mm -hmm. then as we really had to like try to produce something of value to for the marketplace. You know that was you know that was like a, a, a transition we need, and, and then the the groups were large. So when I was working at Xerox, we had large groups that were spanning um, the world. I mean, Japan, the Germany. The, I mean, like it was in England. Like we had a lot of developers, so you had to find some way to organize it all. Yeah, and waterfall was a way to organize. So it was actually an improvement in a way, but you know it doesn't really work um so but now you're talking about yeah you, you're talking about the the early 80s or the 80s but uh you know dr royce dr royce created for the the ministry of defense oh sorry and that's it's, it's the department of defense he created the uh, iid incremental uh, iterative development for complex uh, computer programming of the army but uh, he came up with this model of the waterfall so so you create both kind of system, um, Dr. Royce, back in 1971. And actually, you probably know that, uh, you two guys, but uh, I did use it uh, uh, with Daniel Mizik on, on the Agile Boston talk uh, to show um, a great article from uh, Uncle Bob, Robert C. Martin, at the University of St. Paul, who, who actually kind of, I don't know, it's, he, he put in perspective this reality of these two creation the uh, actually it was not it was it called waterfall back then, I think they were using another term. It's but uh, nevertheless I, it was like I think Roy, I think Royce was the waterfall was in the Royce paper. But, yes, but it go, but it goes back to World War One. You know, Gantt, the, the the Gantt chart guy. He was yeah, nineteen nineteen. I mean, but yeah. and that's that's where again that whole the way of of organizing military forces in that way. Yeah, you know, oh, that, that's, been... but that's kind of so funny because a lot of people say, oh, we don't need the history of, of these things. Uh, we're just, are you ready to deliver? Are you ready to, to make things happen? I've said, yes, but, but why do we need system? Why are we systematically thinking in system? And I made it on first post to talk systematically thinking in system. Like, uh, why are we so functionalist? Or why are we so utilitarian or stuff like this? Because for me, um, uh, when I started, like it's two engineer actually who, who, who give me the book of Schrober and Beetle, uh, Agile Software Development with Scrum, and they tell us, uh, forget about what the CIO told you uh, to do and to be a project manager. You're going to be our Scrum master in period. So read that book and came up with something and let's build a team. And we, we, we had a secret team and this big kind of department at soft sim technology back in the day. 
they were building software. But again, for me, it was just like, okay, so you want to deliver things uh, faster with more flexibility. So that's the thing because agile, it's an uh, adjective, right? It's not a name. I don't think they call it as a name, but uh, so uh, it is now. The, M. It is agile. now, yeah. yeah. So, and, um, <laughs> but, but, but again, <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? I that want this is the, that's the character oh, oh. Inigo Montoya from The Princess. Oh, yes, yes. She, she said, oh man, yeah. you, you've killed my father. <laughs> exactly. In, the guy says, inconceivable. Oh, you're you right. Keep, you, you keep using that word. I do not think mean what I think. I do not think it means what you think it means. Yeah, yeah probably <laughs> inspired by Bill Burt a little bit there. Yeah, uh, awesome. But so, so, gentlemen, for me, when I saw this, I laughed. I was kind of happy. Other people start to want to, um, is it denounce or aware, uh, kind of awake people that we could do better as a agile community or scrum community or whatever you want to call ourselves together. It's, um, and, and it's really sad because for me, 23 years later, and I remember last time I was in person with Mike uh, Beadle in New York, uh, and we catch it on video, actually, I have it on my channel somewhere. He says, like, he, uh, he was asked a question at the Business Agility Institute uh, Summit. Um, uh, don't you think uh, Agile, it's a whole thing? Now it's 17 years old, blah, 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 in 2018, I mean. And he says, like, he, right away, and so, like, no, because the real revolution, it's business agility to agilize everything. And agilizing everything is not like evangelista or whatever. It was It was thinking of transforming the experience because at Enterprise Scrum, uh, we were all about the experience. We didn't have just UX and CX. We had EX for employee experience, people who do the things. We have even shareholder experience, stakeholder experience, professional experience, like everything was a hex. So we, we are the creator of X at Enterprise Scrum, actually. X.com should be ours. But anyways, <laughs> joke, joke aside, so and so the real revolution was to bring one of the 12 principles, my favorite one, IT and business people working together to satisfy the customer. And people tend to forget that when they go into their utilitarian system of delivery and, and stuff. So that, that was my thought. And when I watch it again, this uh, paradox on video from uh, Stripe Giraffe with developers, they say like, <laughs> are you ready for this? They say that the portrait, especially on the 23 years later, it shows, it says like, these are not engineer. These are not software engineer. These are not programmer. These are goofy web mobile application specialists. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I think it's true. <laughs> so the okay, war okay, okay. within within IT and developer is still there. And this is why in my last 10 years of trying to bring business agility into life with Enterprise Scrum or Scrum as scale, what have you, was always the um, rebuttal from the business people. They said, like, they don't even agree on agile and IT and you want us to be agile. So those two, I drop it there. Comment, uh, thought, and I, whatever. I, I want to hear Ryan's take on it, but just about what you said about engineer versus the, the like webbies. The webbies, um, yeah. Most of that seemed like to be slacker webbies, but there was that one engineer that they showed at the end who solved the problem, right? Yes, alone, alone in the dark while everybody is partying right. and having and, 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 it's, and it's that lone engineer that looks at Agile and sees all, oh, this is a bunch of BS. Yeah, but there, yeah. but you know, there's there's a dialogue eventually I want to get to because I think there's things to look at. Absolutely, we saw the same thing, Errol. Well, I, I think I think one thing that came out to me again, and even in the, in the back end of the discussion of what we're talking about now, oh, oh, the the real developers, the engineers, look at these at these pseudo develop. They aren't real developers, and God forget those those touchy feely goofball evangelists for agile in the middle and 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 that i think that in group out group stuff i think that's that's the real problem with all this stuff i, I think oh. when when in the very beginning of the video it's like do you even know what you're doing do you yeah. know what i'm doing i mean 
th there's a level of communication that helps you go forward. And if you have respect for one another and that, that you can be in ensemble with each other and do stuff that matters. And if you communicate honestly and effectively and with some tension, but tension with respect and conflict with respect, and that's when it happens. And that, that doesn't matter if, yes, you're an engineer, you have craft and art, you're fantastic. You have this business understanding, you have this ability to communicate and translate. We talk yeah, together. But, and but, I mean, see, but, but I'm saying, but that happens. And, and, and again, I'll, I'll step back here in a moment, but, but this idea of having a small group with this, this really rich interaction and in this, this not this coach on the top, you know, whatever on the bottom. Side. Oh, well. So we really really need to have a system or a framework or whatever you want to call it to, to make this interaction, communication, collaboration happen. Why are we human being these um, thinking monkeys in need of framework? Because, you know, in French framework, it's actually, um, it's, oh my God, I'm losing my, uh, it's a um, cage. A canvas. Uh, it's a, it's not, well, yeah, you become a cage because it's a, we call it a cadre. A cadre, it's um, when you put your certification, you see, I, I'm part of the problem. I've got my, yeah, that's the same. It's a signal. It's semiotic. Uh, how do you call that where you put like uh, the, the a canvas? Frame. The frame, thank you, framework, exactly. So you call it framework. So there's a craftsmanship and English better than French because French is only frame. Can you imagine that? You don't have the work. You, you just frame it and you look at it and you wait that something happened. So that's why, and I could relate to it because I'm, I'm tricultural, French, Spanish, and English. And let me tell you one thing. In French, they don't even, they get less of agile. They are, they are in need of this frame more and I don't want, okay. No intention to be racist here, guys. Sorry about this. I'm French anyway. So, but, but I mean, like it's culturally probably with the language because the word have a weight. And so when you think about it, because I'm always struggling and working um, within these agile adoption more in French, France and Quebec, no difference. Um, then when I elevate myself in United States, United Kingdom, in Australia, it seems better in the uh, Anglo-Saxon type of, of thing. I'm not saying it's all perfect because there's the same kind of struggling, but but li literally, and, and in Spanish, that's another story. It's, I don't want to get there, but but again, it's not about race. It's about language and culture that shape your mind with the words. Okay, so be careful in your comment. Don't call me a bigot or a racist because I just said that. No, what not mean? at all. Oh, that this whole this whole question of frameworks is is important because even if you think of the just the the cultural idea of a frame, mm -hmm. um, it's it's a it's a kind of rigid structure when you when you choose one, and com compare and contrast the the idea of a frame framework to the ideas of Christopher Alexander in, in architecture of thinking of patterns and noticing. Mm -hmm. The patterns in in a context yeah. where they provide value and and that is a huge difference because you know scrum has some fragility because of its rigidity and that that and ends up sometimes being detrimental to to is, is that so do, do you really see or experience scrum as a rigid type of system that create frameworks well, okay 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 i yeah, go, go, go. Harold, Harold, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, well I mean, when we're, when we're talking about a frame, we're talking about a game, right? There's rules yeah. of the game, right? So it's a clear goal, clear rules and roles, way of tracking progress and opt-in participation. Four-part game structure we, we talk about in, in Daniel's work, in Daniel Mezik's work, yeah. and, and all this stuff. And that it's okay to have rules and roles as long as you opt into them. And, and that if, if that, that structure, because without a structure, without a context, it is chaos to self or to try and self organize and self manage with yeah. no structure is, is, is asinine. And, but, and I think, but, but what, so I want to get back to the rigidity thing. So, it, and I know, and we all know tons of scrum masters who manage that framework in very different ways. 
and, and to, to treat it as much more of a human thing who, who, who gives space to the developers to, to, to manage those practices within that context and observe what happens in the context if it, if it fits or doesn't fit the developers. I mean, and there's there's so many different ways. It's like jazz, man. It's yeah. like you have you have a tune, you got a melody, structure, chord changes, and this. And then one person can play it like a march, another person can play it like a bossa nova. You can play it a duet, trio. I mean, this is and and the jazz form, A A B A melody changes um, structure, that's a form. You could say that's a framework, but Just, there's infinite ways of navigating that framework to get the result that you want to get. The way I experienced it since 1999, I don't want to brag about it, but when those two engineers and me the book of Schrauber and stuff and said, let's build this thing and let's try to do this with our uh, software engineers. So, I mean, we I never had in those last 23 years practicing Scrum. I could say that I onboard maybe a thousand teams into it in different type of level, even using some kind of scale fr uh, framework uh, for lack of a better word again. And that's why I was since 20, 2009, actually, I was um, picking Mike Beadle and this gang of, of Enterprise Scrum because I, I like the possibilities on, of ultimate configuration of the Scrum system. Because this is, this is Mike Beadle who taught me that it's a system. And because we have both a background in physics, we, if we understand the subsension element of the entire relation and interaction, you can get it. So, so there's no, there, for, for Mike and most of the gang in Chicago, there were no framework there. There was a system that you could actually make visual and create something. That's why Spotify, there's no such thing as a Spotify model. Spotify use Scrum. My, my, my guys from the Yelp, because I, I was a Scrum master at Yelp in San Francisco and two of the engineer and one designer, they build their own company when they move into Austin, Texas. And they asked me, could you help us create our Scrum manage company? And even today, after $2 billion later and six years later with the affiliation software and API, they are still the three guys and then the teams. That's it. There's no hierarchy. It's more a substantive Substantial hierarchy of architecture they do so, so for me when i hear it all scrum is rigid well um if it is it's probably a misunderstanding of this substantial hierarchy that could create those patterns you explain i think our role because pattern it's more like a modus operandis of doing things and learning fast and changing things it's not like the rule of the game. Oh, oh here's, here's the rule of the game. Uh, our team will be named this. I'm going to need, a, a, like playing rugby or playing football. Uh, I mean, European football. And so, so you will have a defense, uh, an advanced player and this and that. So, whoa. Now, if you do that, and if it's not flexible, it's not, it's not any more scrum in my sense. Well, I don't, well, it's I, not a professional sport. What you know? It's not a professional no, but sport. They use the they use this kind of emulation yeah. too often. Well, that's the thing. You take it to the nth degree, and it's like, oh my god! It's a did, did, did. And then you make the specific rules and the bureaucratic stuff and the violation of the rules. I mean, all that kind of garbage is that you're refereeing Scrum. That ain't what it's about, man. So yeah, so, so you're you're thinking what happened there. The two of you are basically countering me, so I I want to counter no. counter because. Um, uh, the 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 Scrum Guide. If you're not following it, you're you're really not doing Scrum, and you're you're not likely to get the benefits from doing Scrum if you don't if you don't actually engage in some of the core principles and how how Scrum actually works, right? So, is that is that a is is that a flag a referee flag? Did I break a rule? <laughs> but uh, like I I've, I've been in I've been in plenty plenty of but, of agile transformations where it was really, really hard, and and um, Scrum ended up being an imposition because they didn't really. So many of the folks really weren't wanting to yeah. do it, or they just doing it by this naming the ceremonies, or the political environment was really not allowing them. Did ah. not even want them. Like, did not want them to do Scrum, but the the, the people above the people above the people were saying, "Hey, you ah. all got to do Scrums." 
Ah, here's so just, the thing. So here's the thing. So it's not Scrum is rigid. It's no, the, wait, wait. Look, look, I, I, I need to finish my counter counter because the, what I found often really useful in, in helping people um, move towards what, what eventually might end up looking a lot like Scrum is is the the Kanban approach because even though I'm not like a fanatic about Kanban, there's a little bit more flexibility. You don't need to have um, just a specific iteration period, and there's a lot more clarity about um, streams that get interrupted. And for, for a lot of DevOps yeah. folks, yeah, they yeah. they're constantly getting interrupted. You know, a lot oh. like a lot of people in the delivery teams, they, they're getting constantly interrupted and. Scrum just gets painful to fake it, you know, it just... Yes, but you mentioned that the guide from 1999 to 2006, I didn't have a guide as a Scrum Master. Uh, Scrum <laughs> Alliance was around from Schrober himself. Uh, Agile Alliance was there, but there was nothing there. I used to hang out, uh, I started hanging out with Agile Boston when Mizik created it, mostly with Schrober is creation of Scrum Org when he was pissed off with what happened with the certification process. So, so for me, following a guide, we were building it. It was a team building. What you have to know as a great servant leader, the coach of Scrum, is what is the purpose of our team and our organization and everything? So so for me, that's the way I, I've learned it. So sp probably that's why I'm becoming now the, the Scrum Grumpy guy. And I cannot stand all of these, whether it is what you saw in this video, the product and video actually could scare the shit out of some leaders or manager that want to implement a type of Scrum or Agile, whatever thing you want to call it, because they will say like, oh, now I'm going to have this kind of consultant or this kind of coach dancing around my office. This is not what I want. I don't want chaos because they will associate badly the self-organized team to this kind of goofy circus that I've seen in San Francisco back in the day, that I've seen even here in Montreal, Cité du Multimedia, Multimedia. So because that's the thing. It's so probably why like, you have you have to to content it, but but saying that doing Scrum without following the guide, well, it's this is the rigidity. Because for me, of course, I I prefer the art of agile from Alistair Cockburn with his martial art approach of Shuari, because I think the rigid part you express, Arl, if I may, it's, that's my understanding, it's my perception. It's when you are in the shoe part. And for our listener that don't know martial art and this shoe I rescale, the shoe moment of a team or a person learning something complex like Scrum, it's you have one master. So let's say that today our one master will be Harold, and Harold is telling us, yes, follow the fracking guide. Follow the exact way to perform a planning, to do a daily stand-up. I, I agree because we are new to it. So we have to follow one master one set of rules, and this is the rigid aspect in the shoe moment. But when you reach, when you sprint after sprint, you've learned from each other, you went into the curve of the Talkman model, I believe that you could start to be in the ah moment. And the ah moment is when you bend the rule, when you start having this more configurable Scrum that we built at Enterprise Scrum, even without scaling, by the way. And then the re-moment is... When we say, okay, thank you, Harold, very much. Now I'm going to learn from Ryan as well, and I'm going to teach it myself because I know better. So if, if mm. you have this kind of shuari approach, and that was the response of Alistair Corburn to a dark agile or a zombie agile uh, blog back in the day from Ron Jeffrey, if I'm correct. Yeah, but he's, uh, I just look, Alistair Coburn is not a scrum pusher. But now he's not as he's, he's more like this. He called it agile. Uh, yeah, but I'm using it. I'm using his own, kind of process, framework, right? I'm oh, sorry. He had his own. He had his own framework. It's crystal, it. right? He's crystal. Yeah, but it's here's the thing. Crystal. Okay, so right. so now if you want to go back in 2001, I was there in a the chat room. You probably were our old too. You know when they were arguing, and then I think it was Jim I. Smith and uh, Robert C. Martin says like we should gather together instead of. You know, all the people were like, oh, my method is better than yours. Uh, my Nexus thing is better than yours. And da, da, da. 
So yes, that's why they gather together to stop arguing on those news group uh, online forum on MERC. I'm speaking of people of almost the same Merck. age. Yeah. Merck, yes, Merck, M-E-R-C. So, I mean, so that's why they gather together. They propose to solve that battle between those systems. But anyways, my point is, if something is rigid or if, if it's flawless, it should be the decision of everyone. Agreement. If you're invited to do something, at least do something. But if you impose, if well, you impose other rigidity, take another sense. So I think we've got we've gone we've gone three different places here, mm -hmm. and that that there's you. you I, I we are get, three I wanna, people. Well, I want to I want to get back to right, first um, one. <laughs> oh, so I, I think there's, are you going to identify there's, where we've been going? The well, three places. I, I, well, no, I just I wrote some stuff down. I mean, you were talking about. I think Harold, you brought in if you're not following the principles of Scrum, you, you then all the rest of it doesn't matter, right? And, and that, it's not, that that's not exactly well, what I said. Well, I mean, I mean, you said something something about the the sense of if you're not following the rules, you're not doing Scrum. You you said that, yes. I'm saying you're not likely going to get the benefits if you don't really follow the guide. You're not likely yeah. to get the benefits of it. Well, well it's a true moment, and like. Well, my, my, my point was, is that I think there's, there's also the scrum patterns, you know, there's the scrum patterns also in this, in this, the scrum book that Sutherland and James Copley and put out there that there's, I mean, that's a 700 page book with all the scrum patterns and all the stuff and the, the very nice articulation of that stuff. And then, and the principles, you know, there's only three transparency, inspection and adaptation. How much of each of those do you want to do and how do you want to establish those and and again that's in the guide so uh, and and this is all about you know the interpretation of it um yeah. okay. but again we we again we can we can argue about the details i don't know that that necessarily matters no no let, 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 let me bring you back to this paradox and why did i also wanted to go into shuhari and learning because i think that yeah. that that is a per, that's a specific kind of thing that I think there's some holes in, but but for me, this this is the backstage that my team and I had success in implementing Scrum and even Scrum with DevOps, even Scrum with OKRs, even Scrum because that's the magic of it. And for me, it's a combination of what I've learned from uh, Alistair Cockburn proposition of the Shuari at the Agile Art, without any framework. By the way, I took it for Scrum because I'm a sucker of Scrum. I love Scrum. Okay because that's, I, I think I understand the principle. And, and actually most of the coach, the scrum coach that I know that perform and have great efficiency, have all the background in science. Who was that? Not talking about engineering, not talking about like uh, whatever communication, uh, be a great organizer, no, 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 no. They have a background in physics or chemistry. Uh, so these are the ones who get it faster because we could relate to what we've learned and physics, and astrophysics, and, and chemistry, and we put it back into a human interaction. So, anyways, that's that's could be an opinion, but that's my experience, objectively observing uh, teams um, serve serve, not lead, not manage, but serve by a great scrum master who are a coach, bringing the principle of scrum, and with a kind of a understanding of the escalation, because if you have all newbies people, even in the code, even in the business, uh, you will have the Talkman cycle that will hit you. So if somebody will tell me, oh, I never storm. If I, if I interview a Scrum Master, I never had team that storm. So I don't know what the, the essence of your question of how I did mitigate any kind of behavioral aspect of the interaction between a designer and a product owner, for instance. So, I mean, for me, that's, that's bullocks. So there's always storming and of course- And we're storming, we're storming now. <laughs> yeah, well, but with a smile on our face. I mean, like it's just, it's, it's a conversation. It's an open conversation. And actually I'm not here to be right or wrong and I don't want to agree or disagree with you. I'm just like openly thinking of it. And, uh, and uh, that's it. But maybe Ryan, I feel you a little bit here with your eyes and everything. So get it out. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening, listening here a little bit. And I think I wrote, wrote something else about, I mean, I, I think we're, we are kind of talking about a, a little bit of the, the, the methods and practices and what, what yeah. came. 
Um, one thing I, and I think this, the, maybe there's a, a key to this around, we talked about patterns, all right. And that, that, that the patterns give us that, that play in the middle. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think, and, and I think, and what I learned and again from Daniel Mezek, again, as he talked about the eight patterns of open business agility, yep. and the way he, well, and what are we talking about? What patterns are the way he described it? And it's probably different than Christopher and the way Christopher Alexander describes it, but it is this connection between values and principles and then practices, right? Yeah. There's this diff there's this difference in the middle. There's the pattern. What practices will we use? How will we apply a pattern? So that tells us what framework and method and techniques and whether it's flow, theory of the constraints, whether we're going to go back to crystal, XP, or all this, all these other tools that are that are down here when the actual people doing the work are doing the work. But how do how does that that container within which that team exists? What what are the what are the the waves around that? What are the what are, what are we really going for? I mean, I'm, that, I'm gonna, that, that's I'm, that's the thing. I, I think that's the key. That the that the patterns are the key. What 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 unlock? What gives us the space? What opens that space can for I, the team for teams to thrive? Can I answer you with the uh, cool thing? The uh, the CEO. I was uh, having a coffee early, early, early this morning. Hmm. He said, "Don't give me that container." Just, <laughs> just assemble a team. Just assemble a team. Don't give me that. What? I don't know what word you used there. Sorry. Don't, the, oh. do, don't give me that like, was container. I, I, oh, I, I'm, container. I'm I'm quoting. I'm quoting. Maybe we had a kind of. A, the, I'm quoting the CEO. I was like having a coffee this morning because mm. they want to hire our services to help them. Whatever the thing that he says, like, don't give me any container or framework because I reuse a, your name container. Because he says, like, first, my team is very multi generational, no, no, multi generational, generational, yeah, generational, and some some of them, uh, the the younger ones, especially, they just want the freedom of expressing their skills, and they are really high skills. And for the older one, uh, they dare to kind of, you know, cover them. So, but the thing is, for for, for him. He literally answered me at some and the point we had a kind of a that conversation on what will be the best and their context and their business context and their SDLC context and everything. What will be the best maybe approach to for them to learn or to implement? And um, I, I, I didn't mention anything myself. I didn't mention either Kanban or any other method with uh, life free Java, what have you. No, nothing. I was not buzzwording anything, but at some point in the conversation. It was a symbol of what Ryan was expressing. And he says, like, no, 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 no. He said, I don't want any container, any framework. I want someone who will be able to help me assemble a team that are ready to deliver the greatest experience to my customer. We are uncovering ways of developing software yeah. and helping others. So then it. after, yeah, so then after, so that's why I believe in this shift in the mind of those buyer of our services. Uh, and yes, I agree completely with you what uh, Christopher and Mizik are explaining. I think that from what I get from now, so the principle should inform the patterns. And I always seen it like this. For me, you know, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not reciting you the four values and the 12 principles. But I do believe that this manifesto for agile software development could be adapted to the real revolution of business agility. And we could use those 16 items, values and principle, to inform what will be... Actually, they help us to make decision. And it's not a one size fits all here. So... You cannot like, but if I think if you, if when people ask, oh, do we need the lean agile intelligence software to do the maturity assessment of an organization? <laughs> uh, no, you don't. You just have, I've got a card gameplay. I distribute those cards. Every card have a principle. Okay. They have to read the principle. They have to tell me if what they understand from that principle, because we could have different point view of it. And do you do it with your team? And if not, why not? 
Oh, so this is when they say like, oh, that's right. I've, if, if I understand it better with Aral, uh, we'll be able to make a better decision that will become maybe a pattern of doing the things together in our work. It's all about work. It's all about business. It's all about revenue and making money at the end of the day also. Uh, so, I mean, we have to be frank about it. So so when we see on LinkedIn uh, or those guys that strip a giraffe, they have a survey, by the way. Have you done the survey? Hmm. Because at the end of the video, they invite us to go to a survey. It's a 20-minute survey. I will do it. But I, I wanted to do it before our, 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 uh, our podcast today. But... Hmm. To, to pull out us. So if we go back to this, this, um, the sparks from these guys uh, with this uh, agile paradox, and why do they think they use this word paradox and, or paradox? It's um, because I don't know if they play paradox a German on. Greek root. It's different than paradox. There's, is there's, a, there's, a nice, there's a nice paradox that's, that's played out that I think is an interesting one. And I, I saw it like you say, in this engineer versus lightweight people who just want to talk about the process and, and not actually do anything work and get anything done. Yeah. And like when, when you, when you tie this to business agility, this is something I feel a lot of passion about because I don't think people really are tuned in to the, some of the, uh, the core idea, the, the truth around what is valuable. And you end up in, in deep systemic conversations when you, when you get into this and, I, because of Al Shalloway, even though I've known about um, patterns, architectural patterns for software development for like two, two, two or two and a half decades or so, mm -hmm. um, Christopher Alexander is an incredible mind. And, and Al Shalloway has, is someone who's really dived into that work and kind of embodied it. And uh, Christopher Alexander, if you, if you study his work, it is it is global it's it's he's this is a thinker that's thinking a planet in a planetary scale and i, I think a lot of young people are thinking about this uh, and a lot yeah. of the elders oh, have yeah. thought about the issues for a long time and they don't agree and and it's coming to a place of of um catastrophic disagreement and the the thing that i think is like really important about this is that um there's a there's a, a concept of religion that I think is dangerous mm -hmm. and and not necessarily helpful because what religion ideally could be or should be or has been I believe in the past has been a way for our culture our, our community to center and agree systemically on what's important what's valuable so that they then can then cooperate and when people just dismiss that for what I believe is what I call the religion of fundamentalist materialism yeah. or some people call it scientism, uh, you don't get that connect and it needs to be an emotional one. And I would say that it's, it's a false religion that is being portrayed. The the real religion, I felt like there was a religion in agile with, with which I still feel in my heart of we're going to value people over the process. I mean, there's yeah. like a deeply emotional resonance for me in that, that I, I believe is important, but you know, what good is it if we're going to value people, if we're, if we're not producing anything. <laughs> exactly. Not yeah, Harold. And, and also the, the fact that we have to be careful because value, is it, ethic or is it not ethic there's a moral aspect if it's a moral aspect it could become a spiritual religious things and just to uh, to be uh, really clear on the use of this german guy of paradoxon paradoxon here you go on the screen i don't know if you see mm -hmm. it so paradoxon is the greek root for contrary a contrary opinion ah. and it's from para distinct from and doxa la doxa so that's probably their intent uh, these guys is the agile paradoxon, they use the Greek roots, not the English or French word or German word. So it's really about, for them, it's a doxa because the tagline is from a revolution. No, it started as a revolution. So let's talk about agile. So they are part of this Renaissance movement that I try to invite people in. See what I mean? Uh, so I'm going to go into the religion thing. You want to go on the religion yeah. thing? Oh my goodness! Go there. Oh man, really? Because kind kind of because 
because Ooh, yeah, more. okay and please yeah, remind me to go back to the revolution aspect after that okay <laughs> well I, th I think i think it falls in there too um, no, I'm sorry. I just want to stop the sharing screen. Go ahead, uh, Ryan. So, I mean, we talked about the, such great stuff is that we're talking about the definition of value. What do you mean about value? We're mm -hmm. talking about, and I think and it's more financial value. What value? I think we're really talking about worth. What is this worth to me? And, 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 that, and that goes deeper, I think, than value. Mm. Um, that, that, but that's one thing is that, and there, there's, so that, that's another discussion about also, let's make sure we're talking about the definitions of the words together. We have some kind of, at least a close understanding and agreement about what, you know, what agile means and, and that. So that's starting. Well, let's try this. Let's try this, Ryan. So what is agile for you means? Uh, well, I, I don't particularly... Oh, but the, if we, if you I, would, I would want, I would want to, th I would want to think no. about it. in what in what context are we talking about? Doesn't oh, yeah. mean natural practices. Yeah, of like course, I know business awesome. agility. Uh, blah, 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 I, blah, blah, I, blah. I think I think we need to go into value because I've had conflict around this conversation with you, Ryan, before, and I, I believe we need to think about value the kind of the way we think about time and space, not as something that you can define, but that you can only continually discover. And when you try to break it into these little pieces, like, oh, this is worth, this is, that I don't believe is helpful. I think it's more helpful to think about value as um, something that people want and um, that, that value ties deeply into theories around economics. Yep. And it definitely ties in, I believe, into religion. Um, and what I, I like something that helped me have a personal renaissance was a book that a high school teacher uh, talked to me about, which was um, the art of the Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. Yeah. Because I, I grew up in this total quality, I mean, professionally in this total quality management thing. Xerox was pushing this to TQM crap, leadership through quality version. And, and like, um, well, what is it? And, and, and then you start going into deeply spiritual topics because this is something I think I live by in, in the Tao Te Ching, which is the way, um, which they were saying at Xerox, the, 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 the lead, the head of Xerox was saying, leadership through quality is the way. Well, the yeah. way that can be named, the way that can be named is not the it's true not the way. way. I, I totally get you. I totally, if I may, if I may. I'm totally in line with that. Once again, for I'm sorry for the audio listener, but for those who are watching, I put on the screen again. There's there's six interpretation of the noun value from uh, this dictionary. It's I think it's Oxford and uh, in English. So you see the value a person's principle or standard of behavior. I believe that the four values of the this agile software manifesto. It's 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 about proposing how do we change our standards of behavior to uncover this this new ways of delivering the worth because like you open it uh, Ryan with worth yes it's the worth of something compared to the price paid or asked for and this and that but values is more like and I I like the fact that Arrol mentioned about uh, regard that something is held or an importance what do you put importance Having value is what we put importance in something. Well, or, so or one, even in one, the interest of. We so, can we can talk about the four values, and if if you want to go there. No, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there because the, the 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 purpose of it is not. But maybe I don't know. But let, let's be. For me, I, I still have like a lot of questions about. Of course, we should ask these guys, why did they do this? And they use the paradox. And that's why. And but for me, I'd like to know more about you. Not let's let's stop sitting our, our late master or whatever. What about Ryan and Harold? What do you perceive? What kind of you saw that seven minute video that I share with Ryan and then I invited you here. That's already a kind of a frame, a, a rule of a game that we play a game together. So I just want to get back to you. I, I do the referee as a host now. So just <laughs> back to, so for me, I just want to see like your great minds, your great perspective. It, we are all different. And as Ryan knows, my device in French is together and different. 
Ensemble est différent. And this is what I praise a lot. This is one of my value, actually. This is my principal value. Mm. Okay? Understanding that we are together, but we are unique and different, and we have to respect one another. About Because we are not Harold, myself, Ryan, anyone. We are not just this or that idea. So that I think, like, I try to practice an introspection and a retrospective that I had with my teams and with music and with others, like, could we have a civil discourse once again, uh, whether it's on LinkedIn or medium.com or any social network, because now everybody says, ah, I'm right. I'm right. You're wrong. No, it's nothing about that. So let's take, so, so these guys, I even on my third watch and with the comment of the developer, I don't want to tell that strip, striped giraffe is wrong or right i think they bring up nice idea they want to do something about it they kind of propose solution of course it's a marketing buff for their firm over in Bern, germany but uh or whatever switzerland i don't remember but the thing is so i want to have your take on it a little bit too for the, the maybe the the next half an hour oh actually we are three minutes to our times so i don't know for you guys <laughs> if you are okay with that go right, on from yeah. third time box by the book. Oh, wait, we have two I minutes have left. I, I got another half hour. <laughs> me too. So at 12 noon, I have to shut down this, of course. So so tell, tell me more about how did you receive this seven-minute greatness video, sarcastic thing, blah, blah, blah. And what would you like to do about it, maybe, if you'd like to do something about it? The floor is yours. Who wants to start? So I, I I I do I do want to kind of go back and forth on this. The the thing about it is it's it. I think the frame of it was how did it become a religion? How how did Agile become a religion? Agile was a religion in two thousand and six. Well, so so in the progress of religion, I, the what I wrote down here and just thinking about it, there's orthodoxy. There's yeah. Orthodox, orthodox religion. There's an agile orthodoxy, and there's evangelists. So if, if you're evangelizing, and there, there's this real perverse kind of ugh. that came from Microsoft, by the way. Well, but but the invention of agile is from Redwood. Well, uh, I mean, Washington. but wherever, where, again, wherever it came from, I mean, so what happened at Snowbird went to Microsoft, got turned into evangelism of a religion. Well, maybe that's the path. But what what I want to get to when I was looking for the source of that, so there there were a few things that came. So if we're talking about what is it like, what if you're not an evangelist? What kind of what kind of guide would you be? Ah. And what kind of, so this is why I want to be, I said, organizational spirit guide. You know, I'm, I don't want to lead people something. I want to guide. I want to be with you in that. And what do I want to be with you with? I want to be with in liberation of the human spirit in pursuit of joyful togetherness, you know, unconditional respect for the human dignity and personal, personal sovereignty of the other, you know, that stuff is in, in, in if you were developing software in that way, if we're creating business solutions to a pain, a painful problem, you know, it's all about that substrate. And that mm -hmm. I thought was the spirit of Agile, right? And I don't want to be an evangelist, you know, telling people what to do and how to do. give me money. I'm an Agile coach making $250,000 a year. I do need to <laughs> listen to me. Woo! You know, that stuff. Crap. You know, yep. I, would, I, I would rather be a spirit guide you know, making, so let's, let's be in this together and earn together based on, again, I'll, I'll bring value, the value we're, we're delivering to the people we serve. So, so that's, that's kind of underneath. And then there was and what connected me deeply again to your work, Harold, and to Daniel's work was, the, you know, the open space agility handbook. And the fact that he goes into the spirit book, Harrison Owens' first book, and that, that's that's a powerful bit. And because he was a minister, he brings mythos, liturgy, ritual, covenant, all those religious terms that are kind of hot buttons. But but it but it, oh, opens, but, it op but it opens up something that's deeper than just you know uncovering better ways of developing software. You know, that's what I was looking for. But that's that's that's, that, 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 that's my critique of that clip from Stripped Giraffe. Because once again, 
it's it's all about IT people. It's all about software engineer. It's yeah, what, what's, totally. in it for, what's in it for the marketing designer? What's in it for the uh, the architect? Uh, I'm not talking about IT architect here. I'm thinking about a real architect that want to use maybe a Scrum or something. So so once again, and then what I've seen is lately in my meetings, um, it's it's people saying that uh, oh uh, every organization will become a software shop anyways. Oh my god. So we are here after 23 years of, I like what you mentioned, Ryan, because I'm also, I was hopeful and I was amazed, actually my amazement, 17 guys in Utah, uh, none of them is quote unquote, a real right brainer. They are mostly our left brainer in terms of, they were more pragmatic. I don't want to make a divide of polarization, but for the sake of, um, Distinctions. So, how do you except speak? Mike? Except maybe others, even Martin Fowler, I think is is is. I'm not saying that they are strictly left or right brain, but they were the majority. Okay, the perception from the external. I'm not talking about my point of view. The perception they were from all the dude, is 17 people, mostly engineer or consultant, really pragmatic, systemic people, came in with human value. Wow, that was my aha moment. In February 2001, when I saw the outcome of this gathering, because all of these OCM people, and for those who don't know OCM, it's organization change management people that try to stall our work of agile. By the way, just saying, generally speaking, again, I'm not a accusing every individual here. I have to generalize to 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 have a conversation. Okay, so don't get me wrong, please. I'm not saying all the OCM people are stalling agile values to make this human and spirit guide happening. So you see, so for me, once again, this video, after watching it for three times and having conversation with both business and, and IT people, once again, it's a nagging, it's a crying of IT people. That's my kind of perception. And, but the haha -ha moment yep. again is a lot of business people tell me the same, yes, we're very surprised and amazed, really amazed, you know, to see 17 guys from the techie world proposing human value, behavioral value to, to, to they actually, this movement of agile, the agile consortium, that was a hardware thing before, right? Harold, they were asking business, could you please let, let's work together. So I, the beginning of this video, yes, I related to it to myself especially as a CX designer, having those guru software engineer telling us what to do. And but and some other organization that was the other way around, without marketing, you will be there to code, you mother F, you know? So that's, I saw the struggle on both sides, but I don't want to take side. It's like the wars we are, we are, we have right now. I don't want to take side of Ukraine or Russia or Palestine or Israel. So I don't want to take side of business as a great scrum master, a servant leader, someone who'd like to create a space for people to develop. I don't want to take side of IT or, or business. It should be about the organization and the organization goals is to create a customer that have an experience with whatever you have. If, of course, in our fourth industrial uh, industrialization, it seems to be only techie, techie, techie stuff. It's only technology. It's only machine learning. It's only AR. Oh my God. But excuse me, where is the human? Where is the HI, human intelligence, human interaction? So, so for me, that's why I'm kind of more I think about it, more I rewatch this video. I'm kind of disappointed because I see an invitation here but it's not holistic. It's not, could we move on? And they talk about revolution. That's why I'm talking about renaissance. Renaissance is something slower. It's something that will include spirituality, art, religion, everything. And I know Daniel, uh, he says agile renaissance. Me, I just say renaissance. It's renaissance for the on bank with the Bitcoin movement as well. It's uh, it's kind of sounds with this real self manage of smaller city states renaissance instead of big supra state and or corporate state. So I'm sorry, I think too much. You should cut me down, uh, even if I'm. Oh not. no, I love it. I love what you're saying. So that's um, 
that's my purpose. That's the value I try to bring. And I would like to invite people because I cannot do it alone. I'm tired. I'm at the fall of my life. I, I need, I need, I need help. I need help to not just talk about it, but while the talk of what we do here at the Dare Real Agile podcast. The, um, the Agile Manifesto may have been penned and agreed on by men. Um, not that I really like this kind of male, female kind of like this kind of thing. And, oh, it has to, you have to have like 50% or whatever, you know, all that kind of crap. Mm. Uh, I, I think we have a valid right to have a conversation here and contribute, even though there's no uh, gals here and there's no one who's like. Oh, and I, I invited I, gals, but they declined. Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm half, I'm half Asian, but to me, I'm probably more American um, than than Japanese at all. But um, the, the thing is that the, the, the guys that signed the Agile Manifesto didn't really get along with each other after afterwards. It, it's before, like sad. before and after. The gathering was able to cut the crap of their disagreement, but finally they... But a, a lot of the Agile community, I believe, was held together by women that were largely in the background uh, in, the, in the testing community. And when when you when you when you contrast this techie versus the business, in in many ways the business people kind of won out when they went to Scrum, and the the techie the XP people like myself, we got downgraded. Like, you know, I don't know if you've seen like cultural cultural history is 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 like when I started grasping this 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 conflict. When if you see the the TV show from from England, um, the It crowd the IT crowd, all the IT people are like down in the basement in the dungeon, right? Like we're often, we get this experience as, as a developer, we're in the dungeon. We don't get to sit at the table yes. with the guys who are making the big decisions at the top and all these, you know, flashy, um, you know, huge income coaches who are getting their agile training. They're all coming from management that they don't have IT backgrounds it's frustrating as heck yeah. as you know, AF thing, you know, the it's frustrating AF. Yep. And, and I, I like when I, when I go to this, you know, this religion thing, um, I know that it can be toxic and people don't what they just want to reject it and throw it out. But look at the Latin roots of it. It's, it's about bringing us back together. Really good. Religio. Yeah, really good. And I like, the the religion that i like think is helpful is more in alignment with what ryan is cheerleading and i do believe it needs to have music and it's very interesting that they criticize that when they bring in the the, the drums and like oh the music of it and like oh we're all together and we got this music but you know it's a false religion it's a fake one where they're ignoring the guy that solved the problem what the heck's up with that this IT yeah. guy, this engineer, has solved the problem all by himself. Yeah. Let's ignore him. Let's not to me. To me. Value. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like it's frustrating. Emotionally, it's frustrating. So I I deeply resonate and I love that these folks have put this um, video and that they're getting lots and lots of views and that it that it it brings up the conversation that it's yes. it's enabling people to have this conversation. And I'm yes. really grateful to them for having done that. Yeah, me too. And then don't get me wrong again, but I have to be a little bit critic because, because once again, I was introduced to Scrum, as you mentioned, but by two engineers that they didn't want me to be a project management. They want me to be a product, like helping them building the product and solving the, the issue as a servant leader. And as I was their CX designer, they choose me. They knew I was not a techie guy. And, uh, but of course I, I am who I am, but I, I relate to this. And that's why at the beginning of my career I was more taking side of the developers among all the IT, because I was, you know, when they say the scrum master goes out and remove the impediment, one of the impediment was not from the business that was from the other IT guy. Okay. Infrastructure, hardware. Uh, you know, those build master we used to have, because I don't even know if it's still, it's still a thing in the uh, IT um, engineering, but 
So the build master was telling the guy doing Kanban DevOps or Scrum or XP or what have you programming. Now I want to do his machine. I want ready to build. So the first impediment were not the business. The business was like, oh yeah, bring it down, bring it down, deliver, deliver, and we'll be happy. And do you need something? Here it is. Yeah, you know. But a developer with a sysadmin, oh my God. I'll, I'll often music, man. agree with that because his machine, his local machine was not ready to produce that code because the sysadmin didn't give him access. And you know, you know the drill. I'm, I'm being oh. frank here. I mean, like, so, so that's why it was our, when we start scaling it throughout the organization, what we, some of us called business agility, it was like, <laughs> hey, you guys, I know I said it before, but I have to read it again because the business people were like, <laughs> you guys don't even agree in the IT world between you to deliver stuff and uncover ways. And you have to, why start. should we trust you when you don't exactly your own. Lead by example, huh? Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing. And nowadays, that's the same thing. The CEO I spoke this morning has a clear purpose. But I bet next week when I meet with a CIO, that's going to be another story. I'm sorry to say that, but that's my reality lately. The, the CEO or the uh, CXO, the customer experience, they have all this very openness to uncover new ways of doing things. But those CIO out there, I don't know what bit them, but they are these orthodox. They are these... They, because I, I'm telling that the way they ask me question about of, of, all of those frameworks. And the way they ask questions is because they have the tyranny of framework. They want to go back to 2001 with these black tie and white suit of the Thomas Anderson software engineer. They don't want Neos. They want Thomas Anderson. For those who don't know Matrix, I, you, you you get me? Okay. So so they want the <laughs> Thomas Anderson. They don't want the Iker. Uh, the guy, the autonomous guy that talk to the customer to understand the user using this application. It says, no, no, they don't want this. They want control. They want the C2. I was at the Montreal Connect Festival last week. It's all about um, these fluffy guys that you see at the end of this video. It's all about uh, AR, uh, artificial intelligence, this, whatever. It's all about like these kind of the, the smart CT stuff and things. And I was surprised to meet entrepreneur in the forties, mostly talking about bringing back common and control in their company they were building and, and, and going back to this horrible opening of this video. So well, the, the, the deal is trust. It's all, it's all about trust and yes. trust is not easy. It's not, there's no machine that's going to like, manufacture and spit out trust for you it's just not going to happen this is it requires being present listening caring about other people caring about the systems that uh, that support people including our political machinery and i'll name this i believe one of the things that is destroying the planet and destroying all of us yeah. is what i think daniel mezik was in, talking about when he when he named the Agile Industrial Complex, which if you've listened to people in any sphere, they all have a different name for it, but it's the yeah. same industrial complex. It's the yeah. same evil machine that's just so, chewing up and spitting out for the sake of God knows what, uh, right? <laughs> the squirrel, the squirrel wants to jump uh, on the neck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, this is the thing. So this is the thing, right? When we talk, okay, let's just start with scaling. The idea of scaling, right? What are we scaling? Where did that ah, come from? It was, it was scaling. It was scaling the production of machines in factories via the industrialized management paradigm of the mechanist materialist, you know, ethos. Man, it's like okay, let's manufacture software faster so we can get more of that. You know, bop, 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 bop. You know what doesn't scale? Human relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when we try that, to do yeah. that, well, so when we try to, to turn that human relationship into a, uh, a complicated, stable relationship that we can predict, humans aren't predictable.
right? So to try and put that into, to, to inculcate that in an organization and just say faster, 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 IT, you got to go faster, 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 yep. Treat, treating IT like your production distribution line, your, your yep. factory. And that, that's why I think, so, so bringing all this, this stuff up through IT can only ever go this yep. far because the CIO was trained in this many, maybe again, I don't know every yeah. CIO in the world, yeah, but, sure, most but, of them. but they're trained in this industrial age management paradigm of manufacturing, lean manufacturing, all this stuff is totally going the wrong way. There's also, yeah, exactly. And, but and there's, there, there's another, there's another type of steering and management that exists out here that allows these, that this, this, the living, thing the living beings to communicate and create right? we're talking about no, the, the, the meta codex uh, revolution or the um that's and among... that's not the topic for today but no but, but i mean i don't but mind because the... i'm open to it even if i still have i don't have a great idea about this because except of what you talked about but and and, and again the name of it it's kind of curious because a, a lot of people We'll we'll see beta as that's something beta males, different. alpha males versus no beta no no, males. no not even like, like if we if we keep it if we keep it into our industry of IT uh, yeah. beta it's not a final version so that's why that a lot of people seems not to understand the message because when when we read carefully what uh, Niels and yourself uh, propage it's, it's it's I think it's great it's it's inviting for me but but anyways that's another topic I don't want to. Uh, shame anything here. Uh, we have about maybe uh, two minutes with the wrap up uh, because I'd like uh, you stay there after the uh, the end of the show, uh, just quickly uh, to have your permission and authorization on things. Um, so I don't know, gentlemen, you, you were mentioning something, Ryan, that I like uh, about the, the the human interaction or or collaboration. Like you can actually, I think everything we cannot force anything. If you force something, it will it will stay for a, a while. When people are hungry, they want to pay their mortgage. Okay, so, but at, ultimately, you don't have any quality. And when I say quality, I'm not just talking about the product or the solution, but the, the quality of presence, the quality of being together, the quality of working in a great space. And now, with could you imagine, like now we have, we have so much distraction, the remote work problem. We have so many other distractions. And what I said... Um, the 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 organization change management people are taking over the agile coach job. I'm talking about Canada. I don't know in the United States if you see the same, but here in Canada we see it often. Now we used to compete with other coaches or consultants in those um, agile implementation, but more uh, more the organization wants something greater for the employees. They don't do because because the CIO. On the board, I, I, I'm a witness of it week after week. They are telling the rest of the C-level people, and this is where I hope Open Leadership Network will be more militant about the open path <laughs> of business agility <laughs> because they don't understand. It's not just about agile. Give me a high agile. No, it's also because those CIO and some other board member perceive agile as agile software management and they will tell the cxo the uh, people in culture the finance the cfo shut up we know better i've seen it in the united states and here the, on both sides of the border right now so yeah. that's probably one of the problem for the real revolution to happen as uh, yeah for, for for this renaissance that i i love because revol revolutions they just like the like meet the new boss same as the old boss. Yeah, it's, but it's it's a uh, revolution. We turn around and this uh, what's the name of the snake again? The snake weed is on tail. Ouroboros. Ouroboros. Thank you. So we're just in the Ouroboros with a revolution. There's but, no. But uh, for, for this renaissance, uh, I think I th I've I've read this book recently that explains so much of what we're dealing with with this takeover of the agile of the military industrial complex through uh, mm -hmm. the consultants and OCM. Yeah which is this book by William Easterly called The Tyranny of Experts. And it, this book is very much focused on international development. Like how, how do we help developing nations develop? And the tyranny of experts, this guy, through lots of research and lots of study, shows that this idea that we can get 
um, and study and measure um, development and, and growth and GDP and all this other stuff um, and ignore human rights ha has led to really, really horrible results that don't work. Um, it corrupts the measurement methods of how we determine and measure what works. It corrupts everything. And th this is why we need to look at the corruption that happened in Lean and the corruption that's happened in Agile. Because when I was taught Agile, uh, Lean by Taichi Ono, which he didn't call it Lean, just was Toyota Production Systems. Mm -hmm. it, it was two things, right? It was, it was, yes, continuous improvement, Kaizen. But the other pillar, the first pillar was respect for people. Exactly. So not enough people talked about it, Arul. I'm glad you did here on the Dairy Lajal podcast. A lot of people, they don't remember this respect as value aspect of it. But when, when, you, when you look at how the West has developed and become so, so productive, it's been because of human rights. It's because of individual rights that people are able to... Yep. to build their own space, you know, build something and not have it just ripped away from them. And, and we just, yep. we just ignore that. And, and when we look at the human rights hor horrors, I mean, when we look at the horrors, um, just yeah. the nightmares, it's because they ignore that. And they often, unfortunately, it's been a huge imperialist move from the West Yep. Um, from the beginning, from the get-go, yep. to blame that the white man's burden, we're helping all these people out, um, and what they're actually doing is just like there's, taking all. There's actually, people. yeah, there's you know like two. There's you know two. There's two books about it because guilt is not. Is, it will get. It will get us nowhere. And again, um, I don't want to get into this thing, especially in the United States, it's very sensible right now. But, but for me, I I grew up with a mother who taught me not just respect, but acceptation of other. And I'm a real cosmopolitan, not a multiculturalist. I prefer cosmo cosmopolitanism over multiculturalism because cosmos, this root is uh, assemble again, a jazz assemble uh, all together. And uh, so gentlemen, I think our time is up because we all have something to do. So please stay there. I'm gonna do uh, what I'm always closing my show with. And I'll get back to you in the uh, backstage. Uh, so remember, I hope you like this. And remember who you really are. You are wonderful. You are powerful. And you are free to be whoever you want it to be and to do whatever you want it to do in respect of one another. Have an happy weekend, guys, and see you soon.